Good morning, children. In today's class, we'll continue with the chapter How to Reproduce, How Do Organisms Reproduce? In last class, we have studied what is the importance of reproduction and why is it necessary. And we also saw the asexual reproduction in unicellular organisms, multicellular organisms and in plants. We also studied sexual reproduction in plants. Right? Today we'll start with sexual reproduction in human beings. How do sexual reproduction happen in human beings? Okay. This is a general pictorial diagram of sexual reproduction in human beings. That is female produce eggs Males produce sperms. This is a male gamut. This is a female gamut. Fuse together to fertilize to become a zygote. This zygote develops into embryo. Embryo leads to new individual. This is a general pict pictorial representation of sexual reproduction in human beings. This cannot happen at any age. To have a sexual reproduction in human beings, both female and male have to attain certain age. That means we have to get sexually matured. Our body development should be proper and at the right time, both eggs and sperms are produced in females and males. In humans, Reproductive organs starts functioning only when we attain certain age, that is, we attain sexual maturity. For males, it will be between 14 to 16 years of age, whereas females, 11 to 12 years of age. That age where females and males attain sexual maturity is called puberty. It happens during adolescent age. That period of sexual maturity is called puberty. During this puberty, there are so many physical changes. And we can see the changes by appearance itself. It, these changes happen in both males and females. Let us see what are the changes that happen during puberty in males and females. In males, in the last chapter, we knew in the study of hormones that testis, it's a male reproductive organ, produce an hormone called testosterone. Whereas in female reproductive organ, that is ovary, it secretes a hormone called estrogen. Apart from this testosterone secretion, voice of the males become deeper, it becomes and it becomes harsh voice. Gadsa the voice. Whereas for females, voice become high pitch. Okay. And for males, we can see growth of hair on the face, like moustache, beard, and other parts of the body. Legs, hands, everywhere, the growth of hair starts appearing for males. Whereas for females, we can see development of breasts. And for males, muscles, muscular development, whole body muscles starts building up for males. Whereas females, menstrual cycle begins from the puberty. What is menstrual cycle? We'll see in the later stage. After that, due to production of testosterone, the sperm, that is a male gamete, starts producing in testes. It gets produced in the testes. Whereas in females, egg or ovum, that is a female gamete, gets produced in the ovary. These are the major changes in both males and females at puberty. Okay, Just attaining the puberty doesn't mean that we can reproduce. Because once we attain the maturity, sexual maturity, Everything should get stable. Those changes, we have to accept those changes. And because suddenly when we see those changes, psychologically we won't be normal. We feel 
somewhat disturbed. So we have to take another three to four years. For example, 11 to 12 years, female gets um, starts menstrual cycle. To accept that menstrual cycle itself and the body changes, she needs another five to six years to accept the changes and to become normal. Similarly, males also feel the same. They feel disturbed. They won't feel comfortable to talk to people during those changes. They accept the changes first and then they'll become normal. Then only it is better to have a sexual reproduction. So our government has made mandatory for males 21 years of age, for females 18 years of age, for the marriage. Okay? Now, after knowing these changes in males and females, now let us see, let me learn about male reproductive system and female reproductive system. First, we'll study male reproductive system. This is a picture of the male reproductive system. Here, this is the reproductive system. It is a sac-like structure called scrotum that is present outside the body, which is not present inside the body, outside the body, below the abdominal region. It is a sac-like structure called scrotum. Within this, there is a pair of testes. This is a region where hormone testosterone is produced, secreted and sperm will be produced in this testis. Okay, there will be two testes. Within the testes, sperms will be produced. And once the sperms are produced, it reaches the epididymis. This is the region outside the testis that is epididymis. Here, the stores once formed, it reaches the epididymis. Here, the stores, sperms are stored and becomes mature. Sperms get matured in this region. Then the sperms moves through this duct, sperm duct or vas deferens. This is a channel or called vas deferens through which sperms move. Okay. Once it reaches here, here we can see a gland called seminal vesicle and another called prostate gland. Seminal vesicle and prostate gland are the two glands that secretes a fluid into the vas deferens. Here, the sperms get mixed with the fluid produced by seminal vesicle and prostate gland and becomes semen. What is the role of these fluids that are produced by seminal vesicle and prostate gland? It provides nourishment, that is nutrition to the sperms and also medium to move. It, since it's a fluid, easily sperms move through this vast difference. After once it's mixed with the fluid, it is called semen. It enters the urethra. This is a urethra which passes through the penis and moves. Here, Urethra is the common duct for passing urine and semen in males. This is a penis. Inside the penis, there is a urethra through which semen and urine gets passed through it. Don't think of both the urine and semen pass simultaneously. Whenever the semen is passing, urine will be blocked and it occurs one after the other. Okay, this is a thing here. And since salmon production, sorry, sperm production, it requires lower temperature, this entire scrotum will be at a lower temperature, at least five degrees lower than the body temperature because tested semen, sperm should be stored at a lower temperature for to be alive. Okay. These are the male reproductive system as one pair of testes and it has a second organ is epididymis where it stores sperms and vast difference is the sperm duct where sperm moves from the testes 
to the penis, accessory glands called seminal vesicle and prostate gland, it secretes the fluid, which provides nutrition and also medium for sperms. The fluid containing sperm is called semen. Penis, it is used to transfer the sperms into the female. Urethra, it conveys the semen received from the sperm duct. It carries the sperms from the sperm duct into the female lung. Now, this is the picture of the sperm where it has a head. This is a head and this is a tail. Within the head, there is a acrosome proteins at the end which helps in contact, which moves into the uterus and comes in contact with the ovary for fertilization. Okay, this is acrosome proteins and this is a nucleus with DNA and which gets transferred into the ovary and this is a tail. This is a picture of the sperm. After knowing their male reproductive system, now let us see the female reproductive system. First is a tube-like structure called vagina. Inside, I'll start from here. This is the ovary where egg gets released once it's matured. Egg is produced in the ovary. Once it's matured, it moves through the ovary duct or fallopian tube. It is called fallopian tube or ovary duct through which egg passes through it and it enters the uterus. This is the pear-shaped muscle, muscular organ that is uterus where the fetus develops, the baby develops in the female part that is uterus. Okay, and at the end of the uterus, there's an opening called cervix. This is an opening called cervix, and this is a muscular tube like structure called vagina. During the intercourse, sexual intercourse or mating, the sperm gets ejected into the vagina of the female, and those sperm enter the uterus through the cervix and comes into the uterus. During that time, if egg is released into the ovary duct, these sperms moves attracted towards the moves towards the egg, and fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube. After fertilization takes place, it enters the uterus. The zygote divides and forms a blastocyst. This blastocyst gets implanted in the lining of the uterus. At one side of the uterus, it gets implanted. If ovary releases, actually ovary releases, only one ovary, one egg gets released in one month. If this month one egg gets released from this ovary, the next month another egg gets released from this ovary. It's alternate time, okay? If fertilization takes place here, it gets implanted here. If fertilization takes place this side, it gets implanted in the lining of the uterus, this side. Okay, and the uh, embryo develops in the uterus and for nine months. This is the structure of the egg cell. It will be round in shape where nucleus is present at the center and mitochondria will be there. The sperm nucleus enters into the egg cell and here both the nucleus gets fused and becomes fertilized. Okay. This is a female reproductive system as a pair of ovary, a pair of ovary duct, fallopian tubes, and uterus. It is also called womb. At this lower part of the womb is called cervix, through which the baby comes out. Okay. Vagina. It's a cervix is connected to a muscular tube-like structure which receives the sperms during mating. This is the details of the structure of male reproductive system and female reproductive system. Here I told once the sperm is comes in contact with the egg, fertilization takes place. Okay, what if Fertilization does not take place. In the previous, earlier I told that 
at puberty females will have will start the menstrual cycle what is menstrual cycle let us know before going into the process of uh, reproduction we'll know what is menstrual cycle menstrual cycle means once the egg is released into the fallopian tube it multiplies it becomes and it enters the uterus if it if the egg does not get fertilized after 15 to 20 days of egg production if does if it does not get fertilized it starts disintegrating and it it starts dying and at the end those died egg disintegrated egg as well as this lining of the uterus which is prepared for the egg production starts shedding andre aache ga try madate ee one layer of uh, uterus lining plus egg it should go off what if the dead egg or uh, this uh, waste material that is shedded uterus lining if it is there in the uterus it is very harmful for the females so at the end of the 28th day women especially females after puberty start shedding these in the form of blood blood starts oozing out from the vagina for 3 to 5 days after that again this cycle from the time of egg production and shedding in the form of blood this cycle repeats every month on that after every 28th day this cycle repeats from the time of puberty usually 14 to 15 years it will start and this gets repeated till a female reaches 45 to 50 years okay this is a menstrual cycle this we should know before starting reproduction this is a picture to show depict the to show how reproduction happens in the human beings we saw ovary is in ovary egg is really egg is formed egg is formed it gets matured once it is matured ovulation means release of egg from the ovary into the ov duct that is called ovulation release of egg from the ovary to the fallopian tube or ov duct is called ovulation this ovens the ovule reaches the fallopian tube the sperms which had entered the uterus through vagina it moves towards the these are the sperms which enters the egg here you can see the two nucleus one is male a sperm nucleus and another is the egg nucleus it gets fused to form a zygote okay this is a fertilized zygote where sperm nucleus and egg nucleus were fused and this in this happens in the fallopian tube itself it starts successive divisions two stage four stage eight stage then after once it in then it enters the ovary and when the divisions are complete almost divisions are complete that stage is called blastocyst formation once the blastocyst formation is over that blastocyst gets implanted into the lining of the uterus this is the uterus lining it gets attached to the uterus lining this is called implantation ovulation fertilization and then implantation okay this is a picture this is a blastocyst where implantation occurs and then it further divides and forms an embryo embryo is a structures are not clear and from then every week 
from embryo fetus starts developing okay with each and every week we can see the changes in the formation of the fetus at this stage we can clearly see the legs hands nose eyes everything we can everything is visible under scanning this at the end of the 36 month that fetus grows in the uterus of a woman for nine months that is called gestation period this nine months where the embryo develops into a small baby that is called gestation period because of the fertilization from for nine months women won't have a menstrual cycle menstrual cycle stops once the fertilization happens menstrual cycle in the women stops till the date of delivery okay this is the picture that showing development of the fetus in the uterus we'll see what how it is inside the uterus okay this is the uterus and uterus becomes thick walled this thickness will be more because it should protect the baby right and it should carry that weight so it becomes thick and it will be full, filled with the fluid called amniotic fluid in this fluid the baby will be floating okay once the fertilized implantation is done a temporary organ called placenta appears inside the lining of the uterus this is a placenta it's a temporary organ produced once the implantation is done in the uterus what it does it has a villi like like structure a villi and right? finger like structures which helps in absorption villi like structures is present this side as well as outside the uterus and then uterus kadage matte placenta kadage eradu kadage villi like like structures iruthe yakendre uterus in the baro nutrients na placenta absorb madkolutte whereas fetus in the baro wastes na uterus absorb madkolakke villi like structures are present on both the sides uterus lining side allu irutte placenta side allu irutte okay this placenta it provides nutrition food athwa exchange of gases that is oxygen requirement it takes the nutrition food as well as nutrients as well as oxygen from the mother's blood supply mother blood circulation in the this placenta absorbs the nutrition and oxygen and gives to the fetus via umbilical cord this is the umbilical cord idu umbilical cord karalu antivi karalu mulka placenta gives nutrition to the baby oxygen no food no nutrients no minerals ellano ee placenta ee karal mulka magu kodutte and the waste produced from the fetus is given back to the mother's blood through this umbilical cord placenta and reaches the blood women's blood supply and it gets eliminated through excretion okay till the ninth month completion up to 36 weeks the baby will be head will be facing upside once the nine months is completing at the flag end of the ninth month the baby turns head turns its head down towards the cervix once the completion is over there will be pressure to push the baby out through the cervix during the delivery the cervix since it's a muscular organ it expands to the maximum enough andre adu uddadagutte cervix to pass the baby out first to tale aache baruthe baby aache baruthe and this is delivery doctor once once it comes out doctor pulls it out pulls the baby out and after removing the baby they'll remove the placenta and umbilical cord also they'll clean the uterus also they'll remove this temporary organ as well as umbilical cord and remove the umbilical cord from the baby they'll cut the umbilical cord from the baby 
this is the details of human reproduction starting from ovulation fertilization implantation growth of the fetus inside the womb or uterus and delivery at the end of 9 months 9 months a female will be holding the baby in her womb and she takes care of the baby very well okay and this presence of amniotic fluid is also very important because once this, sometimes some of the for some of the females this there will be loss of amniotic fluid at the middle of the 7th or 8th month that time immediately they do the cesarean operation and remove the baby otherwise it will be harmful for the baby it might get died inside the womb itself if it dies inside the womb it will be a problem for both mother also okay this is the details of reproduction in human beings okay gestation period is for 9 months fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube implantation takes place at the uterus lining and placenta provides the nutrition for the fetus via umbilical cord to the fetus and at the end of the 9 months baby gets delivered okay this is the details of the same we have pictorial representation for the rough sake of notes i have written here menstrual cycle what is menstrual cycle how it uh, the cycle repeats every month first fertilization takes place then implantation then how nutrition fetus gets the nutrition from the mother and what is the gestation period how the delivery happens okay female at the end of the female the sexual cycle or menstrual cycle for a woman continues up to the age of 45 to 50 years once the after that ovaries will not be eggs will not be released in the ovaries okay that is called menopause starting of the menstrual cycle is called menstruation ending of the menstrual cycle is called menopause it also marks the reproductive life of the women okay after knowing this so far we have studied reproductive parts of the males and females and how reproduction happens starting from release of sperms into the female vagina and then cycle that we have studied after knowing that we should also it is our responsibility to know about reproductive health both males and females should know the importance of reproductive health because women during reproduction first we should understand what is reproductive system both males and females should understand the reproductive system and all aspects of reproduction one should know all what happens what changes female will be undergoing during reproduction because she will undergo physical changes will be there and she will be emotional and she will be attached to the fetus and social also behavior hormonal changes will be there within the women because estrogen will be produced and also another hormone during the pregnancy to protect the fetus another hormone called progesterone also is released in the uterus so female will be undergoing physical emotional social and behavioral changes during the period of reproduction so men also should understand our emotions understand our physical changes and we should be each and every person at home should be supportive to the female who is carrying a baby what is reproductive health reproductive health means it is to avoid the unwanted pregnancies see getting fertilized and getting pregnant itself is a big 
it's a big risk for a woman so if we don't want the pregnancies we can avoid the unwanted pregnancies and during and also overcome or limit the sexually transmitted diseases if we have a unsafe sex unsafe mating we can get sexually transmitted diseases so it is important to know how to avoid the sexually transmitted diseases and how to avoid unwanted pregnancies okay now health society needs to balance the ratio of sex ratio male to female ratio now as of now female ratio is very low compared to male ratio now society is concerned about the sex ratio because most of the society will be only for if it is a girl child they'll get aborted now that is a crime killing a fetus if a female girl fetus and the end magu no tell irvagle sai so it is a crime and knowing the sex determination at the pregnancy time that is also a crime because if why just imagine sex females kammi agutu males jaasti adre can we have a reproduction in progress no so health society of india has called it as a crime because it balance ratio of sex males to females should be there in the society okay let us study what is sexually transmitted disease there are two types of disease one is viral transmitted disease and another is bacterial transmitted viral means as we all know hiv that is human immunodeficiency virus it causes a disease called aids that is auto immunodeficiency syndrome hiv is one of the disease and warts these two are viral diseases whereas bacterial diseases syphilis and gonorrhea these are the two bacterially transmitted diseases how we can avoid these two unwanted pregnancies and sexual transmitted diseases first foremost care that we have to take to overcome the sexually transmitted disease is to have a safer sex okay now next to avoid unwanted pregnancies there are many methods so that process is called contraception it is avoidance of unwanted pregnancies also called birth control measures now we'll see there are four methods of contraception one is physical barriers chemical method surgical method and iucd first method is physical barriers that is use of condom males should use condoms before having sex or females can use cervical caps or diaphragm it's a plastic rubber type uh, this thing that is to cover the cervix so that to prevent it prevents the entry of sperms into uterus so that pregnancy can be avoided second method is use of condoms or cervical caps to prevent entry of sperms into uterus next is chemical method use of chemical method and it's a tablets that those tablets are called oral contraceptive pills that means these are the hormonal pills which changes the hormonal balance the women and stops production of eggs it prevents the egg production from the ovary okay this pills cause changes in the hormone testosterone sorry estrogen hormones in the female ovary and prevent egg production but this method this oral contraceptive pills should be taken every day during apart from menstrual cycle the 3 to 5 days every day these pills should be taken but it has a side effects females will have a side effects because of hormonal changes okay third is surgical method if we decide we don't want kids 
then we can undergo this surgical method. Okay. What is surgical method? Vasectomy. In females, we know vast difference is the sperm and the sperm ducts that carry sperm from the testis to the penis. Vasectomy means cutting the vas difference, both the sides. Both the vas differences are cut and ligated. Ligate and cut maadi, akade cut buddha. They tie it, atwa seize, burn it. Okay. So that sperms will not be passed into the penis. Okay. Whereas tubectomy, they'll cut and ligate the fallopian tubes. On either side of the uterus, fallopian tubes na cut ma butu, they'll burn it so that there will be no passage of eggs into the uterus. Either vasectomy or tubectomy can be done in a partners. It prevents the transfer of sperms or eggs. The fourth is IUCD. This is intrauterine contraceptive device. Intrauterine contraceptive device. And the copper teeth. 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 Metal the plastic at metal frame. That frame will be introduced into the uterus, placed into the uterus of a female so that eggs won't sperms won't move to the fallopian tube and eggs won't enter the uterus for fertilization. This avoids the pregnancy. But this also has a side effect. Use of oral contraceptive pills or use of IUCD, it has side effects. Okay, one should know the reproductive health to take care of ourselves get from getting infected with the diseases or to avoid unwanted pregnancies. And also, we should not do feticide, female feticide. And then, female feticide So we should not do those things. Okay? After knowing the, all these things, now let us see the differences between sexual and asexual reproduction. We have seen asexual reproduction in organisms, plants, and sexual reproduction in plants and animals. Right? Now let us see the differences. In sexual reproduction, Offsprings are produced and they offsprings are produced by a single parent, whereas in sexual two parents are involved. Here body vegetative reproduction, only a part of the plant or tissue is used for the development of a new individual. Gametes are not involved, whereas in sexual, both male gamete and female gamete fusion results in the zygote formation and thus leads the new individual. Here offsprings typically look like their parents. They are genetically identical to their parents. Whereas here offsprings look similar but they are not genetically identical. In vegetative propagation we have shown that most of them is mitotic cell division, whereas in sexual reproduction, meiotic cell division, meiosis happens during gamete formation. Okay. It does not require sense organs, sex organs, whereas sexual reproduction, formation of sex organs is a prerequisite for sexual reproduction. As we have learned in the last class, Vegetative reproduction or asexual reproduction variability will not be similar there. So evolutionary importance will be very less. And they are very sensitive for any infection, mass infection or um, this thing. Okay. So variability will be very less. Whereas in sexual reproduction, variability will be high. And hence, evolution takes place. After knowing all this, can we say 
reproduction is very much required or it is a only means of providing stability for a population in a particular species and the one population ge stable agide anta nadike reproduction one day na how do reproduction in the matra one set of population stable agirat sadhi akandre reproduction hindrane death rate to birth rate to equal agirat sadhi reproduction agilla andre bari death rate jaasti hogta hogudu birth rate illa andre reproduction agilla andre death rate jaasti aagta hogudange ondu divasa we also become extinct we will be lost so reproduction idre matra existence of a particular species irak sadhya okay continuity of species and because of the sexual reproduction variations is created and helps in the survival under extreme conditions yavde temperature agodu disease agodu yene bandru variations idre matra at least few people can survive under the extreme conditions and this variation helps to make the population stable without affecting the entire population in more jana idra one population alle diseases so extreme conditions of flood so yen bandrunu at least more janalle on 40 50 jana at least 40% 30% adu survive agak sadhya aamela 30% inda one again we can establish the population so reproduction is a means of providing stability to the population at a particular spe- of a particular species and another thing i just want to namdralli illa suma kade especially nam south india kade we will get married to our relatives andre sodru maavango maavun magango aatte magalgo ee tara olagu andre nentralle madve aagutte ishtu divasa aagta idu ivaga science en helutte andre we should not get married within the relatives yakandre within the relatives are the dna changes and the variation creation of variation will be very less variations kammi aagta hogutte no nentralle madve aagta idre so those kids produced from the internal marriages they will become susceptible they will become depressed and the one la one kaalekal barbodu genetic disorders barbodu athwa yenadru they won't be so active they won't be so good in learning capacity learning capacity ellano athwa body development e irbodu it might become weakened that process is called inbreeding depression and ola ola galige breeding aagta idre that is called inbreeding depression occurs what does this inbreeding depression how in results you can see uh, what causes this inbreeding depression anta in next chapter that is in heredity and evolution heredity and evolution only we can see what is this inbreeding depression okay now i hope you have understood the different modes of reproduction in organisms and how it is important why it is important and also how we should take care to have a good reproduction okay thank you